Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Third, an architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be kicking off a multi-part series on building a serverless blog on Microsoft Azure using serverless technology. With Azure IaaS, we've looked at a number of things already. We've looked at compute pretty in depth with virtual machines, availability sets, and scale sets. With storage, we've looked at a couple of things, but we haven't looked at everything yet. We've looked at file storage. We have not looked at storage queues. We've looked at blob storage in depth. We have looked at uh, table storage yet. And we've also looked at disk as it relates to Azure VMs. And we, on the networking side, we've looked at VNets, we've looked at network security groups, load balancers, application gateways, VPNs, and we've mentioned Express Route when we talked about VPNs, but we haven't talked about Azure DNS, Traffic Manager, or Content Delivery Networks. Now, where Azure DNS, tra Traffic Manager, and Content Delivery Networks, and Storage Queues and Table Storage all start to come together is when we start talking about hosting websites on Microsoft Azure. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at how to use these various aspects of table storage, um, storage queues, and we're going to be bringing in some stuff from Blob Storage and Azure DNS and Traffic Manager and Content Delivery Network in order to produce a website. But to produce that website, we first need to write some code against something called Azure Functions. And Azure Functions is starting to get into the Azure Platform as a Service offering. And the reason why I want to do these in tandem is because because storage queues and table storage, you really need some kind of programming to go along with these various storage options in the storage space to make them work appropriately and to demo them appropriately. But at the same time, I also want to use blob storage to uh, provide a back end for things like uh, Content Delivery Network and Traffic Manager and Azure DNS so that we can configure a website that will use these things in the front end that will take advantage of them. So my intent is to build something like a blog that is completely what we call serverless and we'll unpack that what that means as we go along that is completely hosted inside of the Azure storage options of blob storage and table storage without using any kind of virtual machines, but it can also take advantage of things like Azure DNS traffic manager and content delivery networks for high availability. The purpose of doing this is to one demo these various features of Azure infrastructure as a service, but also to start the transition into the platform of the service offerings for building out applications on a Microsoft uh, platform as a service and how all this relates to Azure infrastructure as a service. Now for this serverless blog to work, I'm first gonna start with an admin site. Now the admin site is basically a website that would allow me to generate some kind of content for my blog. Now this admin site is going to be a single page application. So all the assets that define this, that would be the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript and images and any other assets that go along with this will be static. In other words, they're not gonna be dynamically generated based on some backend server pages. Rather all of the content will be rendered uh, client side inside the browser by way of calls to an API that will be invoked through JavaScript. Now these APIs will then allow me to uh, control a number of different things as it relates to uh, templates, which are the shell that will be used to create the pages and posts that are related to my blog. So most blogging software will start with some kind of templates that define like what is the look and feel for the website, where are the blog posts going to show up in the page, where am I going to put the links to the next post or the previous post, where's the uh, archive sidebar going to be located, and things like that. Those are all de determined by the out uh, the layout out that is in the templates. And also I'll need something called resources. And these are basically the kind of static resources that are embedded in my pages and posts, things like images, videos, sound files, or things like PDFs 
that I can put into a folder that I can link to. And these resources will essentially just be uploaded from a uh, file on my computer through the admin interface. I'll also have data that's related to the blog. So that would be like, what's the title of my blog? Uh, what are the authors on my blog? What are the dates for posts and pages? Uh, who created them and all that kind of data that's going to be stored uh, about my my blog and then I have the content that's related to this blog and then the content would be like the content for my pages and my blog posts so this would be the actual HTML and text that I would put into the template combined with data and resources and when you combine these four assets you can create pages and posts now the admin site would be secured and not to log into that but the pages and posts are what are consumed by the user that visits my website that would be my blog and they can then read my blog or watch a video, what have you, that is hosted. The difference between what I'm doing here and what a more traditional blogging software would do, though, is a blogging software like WordPress or Joomla will generate pages and posts when you visit the site. So if I go to blaze.net currently in its current state, uh, you visit that website, that page is generated from content that is in a database and it's merged with a template and then creates a web page that is given back to the browser and it's done dynamically every time the page is visited or I can create a cache object if I want to and check that cached object to see if it's already been generated but generally speaking WordPress and other types of blogging software do that whenever you visit the site what I'm going to do with this and I'm going to attempt to create a blogging uh, software that does this is is actually generate the static content and then store that content so that every time you go to visit the site you're just really hitting a static page that was generated by some program that merged the templates resources data and content together and the reason I'm going to do this is because the admin site and the pages and posts that compose my website are going to be static statically hosted on blob storage when we've already done a demo on how that works in a previous video the APIs, however, need programmability, and I'm going to be using Azure Functions for this. Now, Azure Functions is a software as a or platform as a service offering from Azure that allows me to write what we call serverless functions. And the reason they're called serverless is because I don't really have to manage the underlying uh, web server or the underlying operating system that these are hosted on. I, in fact, I really don't even have to concern myself with much of the configuration configuration to even make the software that I'm going to be using uh, and writing here work. It's just going to be uh, install my software on Azure Functions and the managed platform will take care of all those details for me. That's why it's called serverless. Now, the, the caveat for using serverless functions is I have to deal with a more opinionated platform. So I have to uh, generate my code in such a way that it works with the assumptions of, of functions on Microsoft Azure. But in doing so, I can have a serverless architecture that will allow me to generate these pages and posts and allow me to have a static admin site that is generated from these Azure functions. And then lastly, my blob storage and table storage is going going to be used to host my templates, resources, data, and content. Now, my resources would be publicly accessible in much the same way my pages and posts are accessible because I'd need that to be publicly accessible. So it's more or less going to be hosted in a static uh, hosting or uh, on Blab storage, much like pages and posts are, but it's going to be managed by way of the APIs. The templates and content and data, however, will be private repositories that aren't publicly accessible, but only accessible through my APIs to my admin site. And the templates and content will be on blob storage because they're just HTML uh, or you know, text files that are essentially out there that we kind of brought up into the APIs and then used to uh, merge together uh, a page or a post that will then be written back to the pages and post uh, blob storage up there on the top. And then the data itself will be in table storage on Azure. And the reason I want to put it in table storage is table storage has a lightweight query uh, language that I can use to query the data out of those tables. So this is the overarching architecture that I'm going for for this serverless blog that I'm going to be writing. So over the next few weeks, 
weeks, I'm going to be looking into this in detail. I'm going to be posting uh, videos as I move along on the progress of this project. So it's going to be a multi-part series as I build out the various components of this. So uh, each video will uh, highlight some level of functionality that I have going into this particular application I'm going to be writing as a demo of all of these various aspects of this particular application I'll be writing. And once I get the application to a working state, then I'm going to bring in some of those other resources like a CDN. I'm going to bring in uh, Azure Traffic Manager and, and then bring in, and bring in Azure DNS so that I can build a highly available website that is going to be hosted statically on Azure Blob Storage. So thanks for watching watching this overview video of the project that I'm going to be going forward with on Azure uh, to demonstrate many of the other features that we haven't talked to at this point on Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.